Good evening. I'm Rebecca Ford, the chairman of the Art Committee at the Union League Club. I want to welcome everybody here tonight. We're pleased to present our virtual Meet the Artists reception featuring Brahma Lowell and his exhibition that is entitled African Cowboy Painted Ambitions from Ghana, Nigeria, and America. Although we're meeting now virtually, the exhibition is on display at the Union League Club on the third floor in the third floor gallery. So I would encourage everybody on their own to uh, go over to the club and take a look at the exhibition over the next few weeks. I think it'll be up uh, through Thanksgiving. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to introduce now Sally Metzler and tell you a little bit about Sally. So you can see how lucky we are to have her as the director of the art collection at the Union League Club. Sally earned her uh, doctorate in art history at Princeton. She's been a senior fellow and guest curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. She's taught art history at Northwestern and Loyola Chicago. She was the director of the Martin Darcy Museum at Loyola Chicago, and she's held positions in Munich, Germany, and the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. So with that, I'll turn things over to Sally, who will lead the discussion that we're gonna see tonight. So Sally. Oh, thank you so much, Rebecca, for that very lovely introduction. And I wanna say that we're so lucky to have you as our art committee chair. So I wanna welcome everyone from Independence Square in Accra, Ghana, which is what you are viewing in the background. So let me tell you a little bit about how this exhibition came to fruition. Brima had contacted me via email early this year. His works intrigued me. So I arranged to have him come into the club and meet with me. And at that time, our exhibition's representative, Jane Stevens. It was a very cold and gray winter day when he came into the club. He was towing some of his art paintings under his arms. And I really want to say that the minute he walked into the club, I felt as if summer had arrived. I don't mean this simply because of the very sunny palette that he imparts in his paintings, but he had an inherent warmth of personality and a life-affirming approach to art. Both Jane and I, we, we knew this was a special artist who had just come into our lives and a very special young man. And I wanna tell you, I meet many artists over, you know, I've met many over the years and I really knew that he stood out. He was different. So this is why we're here tonight. This is why he's here tonight. And we are celebrating what I consider a truly emerging artist. His paintings, you will see, they narrate his life. Very interesting life indeed. He was born in Chicago and at the age of one, his family took him back to Accra, Ghana, where he grew up. Also, they lived in Lagos, Nigeria, the heritage of his parents for a brief time. And then 10 years ago, Brima came back to Chicago and he embarked upon this extraordinary artistic journey. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to lead you on a virtual tour of his exhibition. And while we're viewing the exhibition, I'll run it through twice. And also remember that if you have questions that pop up during this viewing, please enter your questions in the chat box because we will tend to them after we view the show. So stay tuned. I to just jump in and say that Brahma's getting a lot of love in the chat already. Got a lot of fans out there, Brahma. Well, that's coming up. I'm gonna just read, uh, Emmeline is saying, so proud of the amazing work you do, Brahma. Michelle M says, let's go, Brian Toyo. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on one second. And we do have wonderful music that accompanies this that Brian can tell us about at the uh, conclusion. Oh, right. 
Wasn't that incredible? I think you'll agree his works are truly spectacular. And now to begin our Q&A, I want to introduce two very important individuals. First, our talented artist, Brima Lawal. Welcome, Brima, and please unmute yourself. There you go. Yep. Hello. Good evening, Brima. And second, our exhibition representative, Angela Green, who will lead our Q&A. Welcome, Angela. Thank you, Sally. Before I begin my questions to you, Brahma, I invite you all in the audience, either now or during our discussion, to please enter any questions you have for Brahma in the chat box. Brahma, good evening, and thanks for being here. We are so thrilled and excited to have your beautiful work. My first question and comment to you is that I'm immediately struck by the use of bright colors in your work. Are the colors patterned after African textiles and or woven pieces? Um, thank you so much, Angela. Before I answer the question, I'd like to give a shout out to my family. I'm currently tuning in all the way from Ghana. It's pretty late right now, so I'm very, very like grateful for this opportunity. Um, to answer the question, I'm inspired by the African prints, but I try to be very intentional with every art piece I create. So I take the color palettes from the Ghana flag and the Nigerian flag. The Ghana flag being red, yellow, and green, and the Nigerian flag being green, white, green. So if you pay close attention to all my work, I have all these colors present. Every shade of red, every shade of yellow, and every shade of green. Then I think of other colors that can complement them. So to answer your question, when I'm trying to be very intentional, I use the colors of the Ghana and the Nigerian flag. Thank, Thank you. you. Most of the faces in your work, I've noticed, have very little facial definition. What's your intention in not painting the features on the faces in your paintings? And to, to um, add to that, who are the people in your paintings patterned after? So I, I believe I'm not only an artist, I'm also a storyteller. So it's like imagine reading a book and like trying to imagine what the character looks like, or you can imagine yourself in the character. So most of my paintings have all stories behind them. And I don't draw facial features because I want the viewer to imagine their face on the subject or like someone they might know that can remind them of that experience and put that face of that person on the subject. So I make the face very like, you know, there's no face. So you can imagine yourself as the painting. And the people in my paintings are, I try to make sure all my paintings are close to my heart. So they're all people I know personally people who have impacted my life in a positive way, or experiences I've faced in my life. So 
some of the subjects are me, my friends, people have, who have inspired me and um, just random life experiences that I come about since I was a kid. Excellent. I, I think people can see as we view those and we'll be viewing them again that um, there are they'll be able to recognize which ones are you yeah. um, without the facial features. So excellent. Um, why did you use a cowboy as your muse? And the cowboy um, for the audience was in the first painting that we saw. So the reason why the muse is a cowboy is actually starts from my my fascination with horses since I was a kid growing up in Ghana. I was I was raised in a Muslim household and in Ghana we during in Islam we celebrate a festival called Ramadan, which is 30 days of fasting. So at the end of Ramadan, we have a big festival parade in, in the streets in Ghana. We call it Eid Mubarak or Salah. And the whole street is blocked out. And many, all the chiefs and the, and the kings and the princes of different tribes in Ghana come out and like ride their horses in beautiful garments and throw candy to the kids and money, like it was like our Santa kind of like throwing candy to us. The funny thing about that, I was so amazed by the horses, but I was so scared. I didn't want to get too close when I was a kid, but I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So my passion of art is a metaphor for the horse. So like, I've always liked to draw. I've always had this idea of being an, like I had this dream of being an artist one day, but I was always scared to jump on the, um, passion, which is the horse. So I, for those who don't know, I really started taking this seriously last year, September, and I proclaimed myself to be an artist. So just like how the cowboy is brave, confident, fearless, that's how I see myself jumping on my passion of art and going through this journey fearlessly, confident, and passionately. So that first painting is like me in the genesis of my journey. And I believe wherever I go, I'm always going to carry the places that have shaped me to be the man I am today, which is Ghana, Nigeria. And of course, I'm currently living in America. So Chicago has really impacted me in a very, you know, shaped me in a way that has made me the man I am today. So to answer your question, I am a cow. I am the cowboy who is going through this journey of my passion of art. Very good. I love the metaphor using the cowboy. That's wonderful. Um, in your paintings, there are outlines around each figure. Did you paint the outlines first and then do your painting of the figure? Or did you paint the figure and then do the outlines? And tell us the reason that you use this technique. So I paint the subjects first. And depending on how the painting makes me feel, I draw the outlines. Um, during my journey through this um my artistry, I started feeling a power in my paintings. Like it's almost spiritual. It was, it was very, very scary actually, because I never, I didn't think that was possible. Like I was feeling this strong connection to my paintings. And I started thinking like, okay, these subjects and people I'm painting, the paintings have to be kind of powerful, you know? So just like an angel has a halo or something, like I gave each subject that I feel a connection to so not all my paintings have that some of them have that and that shows that it's like the aura the power that the painting has the the, the protection this the energy the painting has so if you see a painting that has that um outline around it it signifies like power strength or some type of powerful energy i felt during the process of painting that specific painting okay very very good um so as when we look through these again, when Sally puts the um, show back up again, we're going to um, pay attention to the outlines and the no definition of the um, on the facial features. And I think now that'll bring your attention to those things and your wonderful answers. Thank you, Brahma. And now I'm going to turn the floor over to our audience and to our moderator, Miss Emily Moreno, ULCC board member and chair of communications. Please, if you have yet to do, please enter any questions for Brima in the chat box at this time. Thank you, Brima. Thank you so much, Andrea. 
Thanks very much, Angela. First, I just got to say again, Brian, the love you're getting in the chat is amazing. Um, the colors and the textures, um, there is just a lot of love. So keep your love coming because it's well earned by Brahma in the show. Our first question, and I have to say, we might not get through all the questions. There are so many coming in. And if I, your question was already answered, uh, it might not be uh, addressed at this time. So, um, Sandra asks, who are your art heroes? Who inspired you visually? So the, I'll say like, I'll say two artists really like impacted me to take this seriously. I'll start with Kinde Wiley. Um, so I had the um, privilege of studying abroad in Paris in 2016. And I was, I was, I studied, I studied business in college. I didn't study art. So I went to college out there in the business school in Paris and I just explored all the museums I could. And I saw kind of Wiley's work and the, the way he depicted uh, black people was just so inspiring. And I was just like, I have to do this. I have to do this one day. I just have to do this one day. So kind of Wiley is one person and then Marco Buffo, he's a Ghanaian painter. He's doing amazing work. and. So the two people is kind of Wiley and a Marco Balfour. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Doug Walker asks, what brings you to the horses? And I think that you um, described that a little bit uh, when you were talking about the cowboy uh, relationship specifically, but are there any thoughts uh, around the horses? Any additional thoughts around the horses? Um, I think I, I basically answered that, but the horse is basically my passion of art. And I'm going through this journey with fearlessness courage and um you know i'm just letting everything go i'm putting my heart and soul into this just like how the horse is so strong i believe my passion for art is so, as strong as a horse right uh reverend randall blakely asks uh Brimo, what was the inspiration behind the painting with the american flag and the Ghanaian flag oh so that was also like basically the title of that painting is where is home i i've always struggled with understanding where home is like to kind of like give an and I don't know why I have those three flags. But home is really where my heart is. Home is where my passion of art is. So whether I'm in Ghana, Nigeria, or America, those are the three countries that make me. But wherever home is, is where my heart is art. So wherever I'm painting, I can be in Jamaica, wherever, like, it's still home, wherever I take my art. Yeah. Um, thank you. And Sandra asks, do you consider yourself tricultural from Ghana, Nigeria, and also influenced by America? Yes. Yes, definitely. You can see the influence in all my work. Um, like I ex explained, I always try to add the, you know, red, yellow, green, the Ghanaian and Nigerian. And most of some of my paintings have a lot of American, especially Chicago, like the trifecta painting with the bulls, as you can see, we'll show again. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Nutt asked, what role do textiles play in your work and what relationship do they have to your identity? So that's actually a very important question because that's where I'm trying to take to the next level of using textile in my work. Like um, Angela asked earlier about how the African print, you know, inspires me. So my grandfather was actually a tailor in Ghana, a Nigerian tailor. So I've always had like this thought process of maybe do I, can I do, can I be a tailor one day, but I'm thinking of taking it to the next level and adding more textiles in my painting. So if you follow my journey to the near future, you start to see a lot of textiles um, attachments into my work. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, we have so many questions coming in. I see um, Lorena asking, many of your pieces amplify community in various ways even when there is one person in the painting. So how did your community uplift you in your journey to claiming your artistry? Thank you, that's a very good question. I don't think I could have done, been this far in my journey with all the people, the, the community, my family, my friends, everyone just like, just like, you know, being there for me, like just words of affirmation. So like, I think community is so important to, to to succeed, you need people, you need people in your life. Like, that's why I, I don't take people for granted. I don't take people and the places that shape me for granted. So that's why I always try to emphasize painting my friends or painting people that have impacted me because I want them to know that they are very impactful in my life. 
Melinda asks, your ability to render black skin is amazing. What inspirations, if any, have informed your technique? So that's a very good question too. The technique- We wanna make you think here. We want it all from you, Brahma. The, 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 the technique actually came very naturally. Like, and also intention is kind of, being an artist and trying to have an intention behind your work doesn't come like just like that. It kind of, it's a journey, you know? So I don't have that answer on why the texture is looking like that. During my journey, maybe I might have an aha moment of understanding why I have the black and white and like, you know, this, this, um, this technique, I really do not have that answer yet, but maybe in the near future, if you keep following my journey. Um, what brought you to the realization you had these skills? You mentioned that you started painting recently, but how did you even know you could paint? I think it's a naturally um, God-given talent. I've always like sketched, like in school, I've, I've always, if I'm in math class, I'll just sketch in the back of my book. All my books were filled with sketches. And I knew, I knew, I knew that I wanted to be an artist, but following your dreams is like one of the scariest things you can ever do. It's like, you have to like surrender yourself to the universe and just be like, I'm going to do everything I can to make my dreams a reality. So I've always known this, but I was not brave enough to accept it. That's why I'm now brave enough. And that's why I, I am the cowboy now because I'm courageous now and I've accepted my destiny of, you know, following this purpose I believe I was meant to do on earth. I have to say just that is so inspiring. I'm not a painter. I'm just inspired by that statement. Thank so you. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, are there any artists right now that are inspiring your work or design style? Oh, I, I said Kinda Wiley and Amako Bafo. Those are the two main um, artists. But of recent times, I've just been trying to, you know, find inspiration from people who I know, like just look at the people, like I wanna paint, get inspiration from things I can touch, see, feel, you know? So like, I've been trying to focus more on just people in my life and just in their outfits, see something they are wearing and just like, you know, paint that. So, yeah. Uh, an interesting question, and I think this probably has to relate to all of your colors and the patterns. If you could paint anywhere in the world uh, that you haven't been to yet, uh, where would you choose to and why? Um, Puerto Rico, because I just like being raised in Ghana, like being by the beach is where I get like peace of mind and like um, Puerto Rico is like a place I've always wanted to visit. and just being by the beach and just painting by the beach is like something that I've always loved. I, I actually painted by the beach in New Jersey recently and it was just the most beautiful experience ever. So I'll say Puerto Rico. Nice. Um, uh, I, there was a statement, uh, amazing bro. And uh, that was from Damola. And what should we expect from you in the future regarding your art? Um, I, I don't know what to say about that but I just believe I'm just trying to enjoy the journey and the process because I feel like having too much expectations like having this big expectations and like oh like this is a beautiful experience but the best experience about this was the process meeting Sally having all these opinions about the artwork all that was like the most exciting thing so I'm just trying to enjoy this journey and wherever the opportunities come to me, I'm gonna grab them and if they are good for me. So I'll just say, I'm just enjoying the journey and I'm learning to like enjoy the now instead of thinking so much about the future and the past. So just enjoying the present and, cause I do believe this is what I, this is my purpose and I, I have no doubt in my mind and I just wanna enjoy the present and just take everything I can now. That's wonderful. And with that, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Rebecca. I think she has a few questions, but thanks for, and again, for everybody showing the love, um, we're recording this and I really want to make sure that Prima sees all the, the love that's coming in. It's amazing. Thank you so much, um, Emily. Well, Brima, um, I think we also wanted to make sure to focus in on two of your paintings. One is the pink rainfall painting. And the other is the Fiore means flowers. So do we have a picture of those 
Yes, we're, those are coming up. Okay. I think All right. Emily well, is going to share the screen if you want it. Right. There we go. So the pink guy, pink rainfall, All right? And so the colors that you use in this painting are different than the flag colors that you've used in the other paintings. So why is that? So this painting, the gist of this painting is about self-expression and just being outside of your box. This is actually a picture of me I painted. Um, this was two years ago, I bought a pink suit. I was kind of nervous about wearing a pink suit, but I actually liked it. And I wanted to actually just self-express myself. And this, cause fashion is part of self-expression. And I was just nervous about it, but I wore it and everyone like, I really appreciated it. So I just thought it was a very, you know, fun memory I had that I was so nervous about wearing it, but everyone loved it. But I would like to draw attention to a few things. Even though this is all pink, I still make sure I'm always consistent with the color palettes. If you look closer to the, the buttons of the suit, it has the green, white, green representing Nigeria. And you can see the green, red, yellow, green representing Ghana on the chest. And the symbols right there are, is from the Adenkra symbols, which is from the Ashanti tribe in Ghana. Um, it's, this symbol is called JM. It, it means like God is omnipotent. Important. Like, like, don't be scared of anything apart from God or if the universe, like don't be scared of human beings, just be scared of God. So this is just like one of the most popular um, symbols in the um, Ashanti culture, it's especially in, a lot of West Africans are aware about this symbol, the Adenkara symbol. Yeah. Oh, so that's wonderful. This painting just reeks of happiness. Thank you, um, yeah, self-expression. Well, and so the next one, the, this painting, Fiore means flowers. Most of your work depicts male figures. So, you know, this one, uh, Fiore means flowers, depicts a female figure. Can you talk about uh, that choice? Yeah, so like I, I mentioned earlier, I like to paint things that I, are closer to me, like my friends, my family, myself. So this is a picture of my friend Fiori. We've been friends for over a decade now. And just like me and her, we have, we have a lot of pride in where we are from. I'm an African man and I, I think it's my duty to, as an artist to shed light on not just Ghana and Nigeria. Africa's continent is so diverse. We have, this Fiori is actually from Eritrea, which is in East Africa. So I wanted to you know, paint her because she's actually been such a big impact in my journey. Like giving me words of affirmation, support. So I just wanted to honor her and paint her. So she's drinking something called boon, which is also known as coffee. Um, that's part of her culture. A lot of people drink coffee in her culture to like for a means of like and community. Like when you have friends over a wedding, that's a very normal common thing. But I'd like to make attention to the flowers. Fiori, her name actually means flowers. So I thought to make the background relatively um, connecting to her name. And the flowers behind are the national flowers of Eritrea, which is a daisy. So that's why the flowers are, because most of my paintings don't have that background to them. They just have like a um, uni um, uniform background, but I wanted to like step out of my comfort zone and research about the Eritrean culture. Um, so this is also just a painting to show like there's more, to, there's more diversity to the, to the continent of Africa, yeah. Wow, well, that's wonderful. So Emily, are there more questions from the audience? Emily, you're muted. I see that, thank you. <laughs> um, there are a few more coming in. So um, from Chipo, you've depicted various African female figures in your art. What traits of these women inspired you that you'd like your audience to get, your audience to appreciate? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question again? You've depicted various African female figures in your art. What traits of these women inspired you that you'd like your audience to appreciate? I'll, I'll say, I'll say lead, 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 I'm sorry, leadership, because um, I'm the only boy in my family. I have two older sisters, my mom, my aunt, my cousins. They are all women and they've always been, they've all been like 
leaders in my life. They've been inspirational. They've been like super impactful. They've, that, they shaped me to be the man I am today. So uh, like I said, I always try to honor people who have been very like, you know, important in my journey of life. And I'll say the trait is, I'll just say leadership. It's just the straight word I'll say, because almost all the leaders in my life, my grandma, like they're all women, strong African women. Um, and then we have a question from Adesua. Adesua um, how do you become so brave as a Nigerian Ghanaian to pursue art? It isn't typical. Yes, it's really not typical. That's why I said it was very brave for me to do. Because um, I never had the confidence to tell my family I wanted to study art in college. I didn't study art. I studied, studied international business and marketing. I was going through this purpose. I was going through this train of thought, like, how am I going to tell them I want to do art? I, I was going through this battle within myself in college, like, so many times. I guess I wasn't brave enough, but I got my degree. Start, st I still work in nine to five, and I started having this train of thought. I need to do what makes me happy because I'm the main character in my book. And if the main character in the book isn't happy, the other characters in the book are not gonna be happy. So in order for me to be a better brother, a better friend, I need to make sure I love myself enough to be able to trans transfer that to the people around me. So I had to face myself in the mirror and tell myself, I know it's not typical for the traditional Nigerian or Ghanaian back home to have a son who is trying to follow the arts, but I wanna make myself happy. So. Yeah, so to answer that question, I don't know if that, you know, answered the question, but yeah. Yeah, um, I think it did. Yeah, There's a, uh, a question from Nigiri. Uh, do you think that your style or artwork has changed in any way once you were free from the shackles of trying to maintain the nine to five persona that of course African parents would have you embedded, it would have embedded in you? Well, well, I still, I still, I still work a nine to five. I'm still balancing the both of them, but my, I think as an artist, your style should change like as you grow. You know, I'm gonna learn something new tomorrow that is gonna impact my, my new form of style. So my style has changed. If you really pay attention to like my portfolio, you see how I've changed. With first, I had a little bit of face, then I was like, no, I don't wanna add faces. Like I said, I'm gonna add more textile because I made a painting of my grandfather recently. And may he so rest in peace. He was also, a, he was a tailor. So I've been getting close to like my ancestors and thinking about how I can, you know, honor them. So like I said, in the next chapter of my career as an artist, I'm gonna start experimenting more with textiles and different African prints. Yeah. There is an interesting question that came in from uh, Mitzi, uh, which I can relate to. Uh, when she looked at your work, I thought she thought about the style and colors used by Bis Bisa Butler, which was a great exhibit that was, um, she had an exhibit at the Art Institute um, that just left. And um, the question is, have you thought about experimenting with textiles given that like her colors are so vibrant, like they're, the vibrancy is probably, um, in that question what sticks out to me between your works. And then you've expressed such a, um, a, an affinity and a, a, a love of textiles. Yeah, so I'm aware of Bisa Bella. She's a genius. Her, her work is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I've been I've been trying to meditate on that and trying to like stand out, find something I can do with text that will be uniquely just a Brian Malawa piece. Like I don't want to, you know, I want to just be my on my own lane. So I've been trying to experiment with that. She's definitely an inspiration. I've been looking at, over her work and trying to understand how she, you know, embroids all that stuff. So but I've not, I'm trying my best to find something uniquely that is specifically my style. So I'm still experimenting behind closed doors. I can't wait to show you guys all like once I have like that style I want to show the world. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I know the rest of us are too. Uh, there's another uh, great question from Naomi. Knowing that the inspiration behind your artwork is centered around the African culture, how did you perceive the art industry in America would accept your work? Or was it even a concern to you? Um, I No, it wasn't a concern to me because I believe that if you stay true to who you are, 
the people who are meant to join your journey will align with you without any force or you don't need to force anything. So I just believe just staying true to my culture and staying true to the things that inspire me. The right people will join me. I don't need to like try to, you know, force myself to fit into a culture that I'm not so inspired by. I'm inspired by the American culture, but that's not everything that is inspiring me. So I have to, I can't forget about my African culture. And I feel like the right people are aligned with my journey, the more true I stay to myself. That's wonderful. I see a lot of questions coming in um, about, are there any works left for sale? Which is a great question. And there are, and we'll take a look at them. Uh, in just a moment, because I see that that didn't, um, that response didn't come through to everybody. Uh, Mario wants to know, how has your business and marketing background impacted your art, if at all? I mainly use, so yeah, I definitely use my <laughs> degree wisely with how I market my stuff. I definitely use social media to market my stuff. I, you know, once upon it, like I think in May, I went out to New York City printed out my business cards, went around the streets of Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, you know, Chelsea, trying to give out my business cards, just trying to market myself out. So Cause New York is like the center of like art. So I thought that would be a good way to market myself out there. But mainly I've been using social media to, you know, try to market myself and definitely using things I've learned in my, for my degree wisely. Yeah, but mainly social media. There is another question that has come in about uh, the African giant painting and what's the story behind it? Oh, okay. So the African giant painting, it's not, it's not an exhibition, but it's one of my, my um, personal, it's a painting of, um, of, of the figures in Paris. Like I mentioned earlier, I studied abroad in Paris in 2016. And that was, during that time was a time where I felt kind of lost in life because I was like, I'm studying business and studying abroad in Paris while well, I should be studying art. And I know that. So Paris has had a big impact in my life. That was a place that was like, you need to make sure you become an artist before you turn 30. And I'm now 26. So I thank God I was able to achieve that before like 30. Um, so that painting is, is a bunch of, is like three um, figures in the, with the Eiffel Tower. It's just a painting, just trying to show my fantasy of me going back to Paris having a show with my friends and inviting all my friends and taking over Paris. So it's just like a, a fantasy world. Hopefully it become a reality. And finally, Julia asks, do you have a first personal favorite in the collection? If so, what makes it your favorite? I know they're all your babies, but are there some that are more, that you're more attached to or happy with? Exactly. So I used to be able to like, when I started painting, you know, I used to be able to answer that question easily, but I don't think I have a personal favorite. I've I had to come to, to, I had to be honest with myself. Like, like you said, it's like having a kid and asking, oh, who's your favorite child? Like all of them have a strong emotional connection towards me. So I don't really have a favorite. I really appreciate all of them in, a, in their own unique way. So I don't really have a favorite piece. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I thank will, you so much, Emily. I mean, I can't, I really hope you read these, Rama, because um, again, the love that's coming through, I wish, uh, I hope everybody goes through and sees the appreciation that we all have for um, Rama. Art brings people together. It's wonderful. Yes, it's very important for the society. Yeah. I'll turn it back over to you, Sally. Yes, thank you so much, Emily, especially for your deft handling of the flood of questions. That was just fantastic. So I wanna take this opportunity to run through uh, each painting that is featured in our exhibition. And I know someone had asked on the chat to let those of you who are not members, and we hope you'll all consider joining the club if you're not. Um, however, the exhibition, African Cowboy, is currently on view at the Union League Club of Chicago, and that is on uh, Jackson Boulevard. If you are interested in viewing the show and you are not a member, please email me or email Brima, and we will help make arrangements for you. It is open to the public, but it will be by appointment. And before we run through these, yes, these works are for sale. They absolutely benefit Brima and the club. So we encourage you to purchase them. 
Some are sold already. Some are kind of on hold. So I encourage you, if you're interested in any of the paintings, please put your request in the chat box. We will then, we have it all saved and we will contact you shortly after our program and let you know it's first come first serve if you were the first um, person to uh, signal interest. So let's go through them one more time. I'm sure they're now all gonna be favorites of yours. We have Where is Home? And most of all of his works are on canvas. There are two on paper. This one is on paper, but he uses essentially the same material to create his vision. That's acrylic and oil pastel. And this is beautifully framed as you see the prices there. Next painting would be Salah has arrived. That is unframed for 550. It's 16 by 20. Uh, Brahma has explained it's a very interesting um, concept behind it. This signals the announcement of the end of um, Ramadan. So it's a big celebration and it is magnificent. Next painting is The cowboy is back in town. That is sold, but magnificent. As you can see, I think you're, it's not surprising that it's already been purchased. And Fiori means flowers, which you've heard from um, with Rebecca Ford's question to Brima. That one is also sold, very beautiful. I think every time I see it, I love it even more. Next, Pink Rainfall 2. Again, this is sold. I loved the description of what um, Brian explained. Every time I look at it, I notice something new. Thank you. Next is I'll find home wherever I go. 18 by 24, it is framed $700. And you see he incorporates again, the American flag and we see the green and white Nigerian flag in particular. Next work. Ah, the cowboy, just the cowboy, very inspirational. Brima's muse, this is 16 by 20 and it is 550. Dreaming in colors. This is one of the other works on paper. It's acrylic and oil pastel, 18 by 24, beautifully matted and framed. It does have this gorgeous blue mat and silver frame. It is 750 and again, speaks of Brahma and his journey. He really was dreaming in colors and woke up and essentially painted this. And next, the one and only, a very personal work. This is available. <clears throat> it is 18 by 24, it's $600. And this is a portrait of Brahma and his father, certainly um, symbolizing love between father and son. And as you noticed when Angela spoke earlier, as he talked about, he doesn't put specific facial features so that we all can feel personally engaged with each work. And next, self-love is not vanity, it is sanity. Fantastic um, work also available. It is framed and he's using a very old technique of the subject looking um, at oneself in the mirror. Far back into the early Renaissance, artists used the mirror as a device for aesthetic interest. And I think this one is fabulous. And next, ah, meet me at the grass field. Also a very um, buoyant, happy, uh, positive work. And this is acrylic and oil pastel. And we're getting a lot of requests for purchase. This is exciting. Um, it's 16 by 20 and it is framed. And please look at the helmet or the hat of the polo player. I think by now we've recognized the, the beautiful trio um, of colors of the Ghanaian flag. And finally, uh, we, we, we end really with the, um, the <laughs> we couldn't do better than this all sitting here in Chicago trifecta, very large work, um, uh, hailing, you know, three of the greatest basketball players, of course, for the Chicago Bulls, 
I want to point out, of course, look at the hair or scalp of Dennis Rodman. He again has the Ghanaian flag. This is sold. Um, and, you know, I, I think just to, to close it as far as I've learned so much um, following Brima on this journey of curating his exhibit. And I think we've all learned so much just even in this hour. He's expanded our horizons of world culture, of Ghana, of Nigeria, um, of a young artist. And I, I really feel blessed that we have him right now at the Union League Club. So again, if you're interested in purchasing a work, um, please put your request in the chat. You will also be contacted after the, um, the Meet the Artist and you'll have my email. You're welcome to also follow up and um, ask about visiting or purchasing. So thank you again. And now I'd like to turn this over to our wonderful chair of the art committee, Rebecca Ford. Well, I just want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. It was so wonderful to learn about, you know, this artist and these paintings. And it's just uh, so exciting and, and, and moving. And so I want to encourage you all to uh, purchase the paintings and to come by and see them on the third floor gallery. So um, uh, with that, I, I guess that brings our program this evening to a conclusion. I want to let you know that our next gallery opening will be on December 1st, and the artist will be Misha Goro. And you can see an example of one of his paintings here. So thank you for tonight. Please, you know, come by and look at the paintings. Please purchase the paintings, and I hope we'll see you December 1st.